Okay, this is the most difficult problem from the recursion section of the course in the link in the description of this video. Essentially, it's called grid sum, and we'll be entering values into a 2D array of numbers where every value is positive, and asking our program to perform a calculation. We have a so-called robot which will plot a path from 0, 0, the top left of our array, to the bottom right-hand corner. This robot will have three directions to choose from, down, right, or diagonal. For each case, where it is selecting a move, we will program it to select the largest or maximum possible value each time hence greedy robot. For example, in this case, we start from 0, 0 in the top left hand corner, and we will utilize a directional array to choose which of these three directions will be the next step for our robot. In this case, as you can see, diagonal is better than the right or down direction because it's bigger. After that, we then program the robot to make another choice. Between 11, 5 or 9, our robot will go right. Finally, it will go down. That's the only direction it can go, because diagonal and right are out of bounds. So, for each case where our robot is selecting a move, we're programming it to select the largest or maximum from the free choices it is presented with, hence greedy robot. It's highly recommended that you familiarize yourself with directional arrays and what a greedy robot actually is before you attempt to solve this using recursion, as we're doing here. Section 10 of the course see the link in the description of the video, will assist you greatly with this. So, looking at the signature, we can see it contains a very large array. I'll be using a smaller array, and total rows here, and total columns here. These last two variables will be initialized to be the coordinates, so to speak, or indices where the robot will start from, which is 0, 0. So in my version of the signature, I'll be initializing both of these variables, start row and start column, to 0, 0. Our sum is calculated by getting or grabbing the value from these coordinates and adding it to a rolling total. After calculating our initial value, we'll utilize these variables together with the entries in our directional array, which allow us to move right, down or diagonally, to calculate in which direction our robot will move to next. Hopefully, it will select the maximum value, which is diagonal in this case, but we want it to be consistent for every case we run it. This is much easier to visualize with code, so here's something I prepared earlier. Basically, I'm going to get rid of this and explain it step by step. The first part is rather simple. It's asking the user for their number of rows and number of columns. We're then entering the values in our array. Each row and each column coordinate is included. After that, we're going to call this function grid sum using the array, number of rows, and number of columns. 
and we'll be calculating our grid sum starting from 0, 0 and moving down to the bottom right hand corner of whatever our array is. Now, it will ignore these at first. These are our directional array values. The very first thing in this function is the necessity to calculate our sum. And int sum will always start by calculating thus. My array start row start column. So if you remember back in the original user entry array here that would be 0, 0 or 1. So next we need to look at the base case because did I mention we're solving this recursively? If start row equals total rows minus 1 and start column equals total columns minus 1 that's when we return our sum. Why? Well, let's visualize it by going back to our original array here. Let's say we had an array where we entered one row and one column and just one value. In that case, our maximum grid sum would equal whatever our element at 0, 0 is. In this case it's 1. And if you look at the signature, basically our signature would be rows is 1, columns is 1, our start row position is 1, or 0, excuse me, our start column position is 0, so our base case would be exactly as here. If start row equals total rows minus 1 and start column equals total columns minus 1, we can return that sum. The same is true for a 3 by 3 array, or a 3 by 4, a 10 by 10, or a 1000 by 1000 if you want. Our base case occurs at the end when we are able to return that sum once our robot has reached this bottom right hand corner. In this case our total rows is free, our total columns is free, and our start position if you like and start position for rows and columns should be equal to one less than the total rows and one less than the total columns, respectively. So, before we continue, this is our directional array. We have di, this is the direction in the rows or i of our array, and then there's j, dj, which indicates the direction we'll be traveling in the columns. Basically this pair 1 0 for i and j represents moving down, down one row but staying in the same column. This move means we'll stay in the same row but move across one column and 1 1 represents a diagonal move. If you have trouble understanding this, please check it out. It's not an easy concept, but once you learn it, you'll find it very useful. Now, having done the directional arrays and filled them in, we're going to need values for our maximum and values for our max index. 
we want our robot to calculate what value is going to be the maximum from the three possible directions it's presented with. So when it makes a move, we know it's going to be moving down, right, or diagonally. To help make this move, we're going to go through the directional array. Utilizing new values, new row equals start row, that's initially zero, plus directional array i, that's our rows, plus oh, plus dii, let's make it a little more consistent. New column will be the same. And what we're looking for when we do this is if, well, firstly, what we're looking for is if r my array new row new column is greater than r max, then r max will equal that specific value. and our max index will equal the i that is contained here. So it can be one of 0, 1 or 2, where this is 0, 1 and 2, or down, right, a diagonal. And once we've gone through this loop completely, excuse me, just one typo, once we've gone through this loop completely, we'll calculate what our start row and start column should be using the index calculated here and our directional array. We'll be doing very simple addition, adding 1 or not adding 1 each time for our row and column position. However, I mentioned earlier about going out of bounds, that if we're at this point we can't go to the right or diagonally. To ensure that we don't go beyond the boundaries, if new row is greater than or equal to our total rows, or new column is greater than or equal to our total columns, then we continue we basically will ignore the fact that we can go in these directions and hopefully we haven't already gone out of bounds. Anyway, to complete this function start row plus or equals di max index start column plus equals dj max index that is, the index calculated in this for loop. Finally, we're going to make our recursive call. After we've done this, we're returning sum plus grid sum my array total rows, which doesn't change at all, total columns, and our newly calculated start row and start column, which when moving from 0, 0, it could be 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. In this case, it would be 1, 1 if moving from here, selecting from these three values, and then moving to the maximum. However, let's check that this code works. So, what would you like the dimensions of your grid to be? Three? By three, please. Now, I should have asked the user to input their values, but never mind. Um, in a real life example, I certainly would. But this isn't real life, is it? 
existential problems aside, this program has calculated the correct result. I hope this helps you with greedy robots and a little bit with directional arrays. Please check out this course for a much clearer and more elegantly presented explanation of this problem.